Abraham Lincoln made Thanksgiving a holiday in 1863 during the Civil War to help unite the nation. During the first Thanksgiving dinner, lobster was one of the main dishes served, and the menu also included seal and swan. Before achieving fame, Jim Carrey, then a struggling actor, wrote himself a check for $10 million for acting services rendered, dating it for Thanksgiving 1995 as a motivational goal. Remarkably, by 1994, Carrie had earned millions from his roles in Ace Ventura and Dumb and Dumber. Before 1933, Macy's Thanksgiving Day parade balloons were let go into the sky at the end of the parade and could float above the city for up to a week. They had a return address sewn on them, and if someone sent them back, they got a reward of $100. The person who wrote Mary Had a Little Lamb, Sarah Josepha Hale, also played a key role in making Thanksgiving an official national holiday. President Thomas Jefferson once famously referred to a federal Thanksgiving proclamation as the most ridiculous idea ever conceived. The Taliban banned Leonardo DiCaprio's hairstyle from the movie Titanic. Reginald Dwight, a pianist, was on tour with a band named Simon Dupree and the Big Sound. When he shared his plan to change his stage name to Elton John, they found it amusing and laughed at him. Queen Isabella of France was very upset and exhausted with her husband, the king. She left England, fooled him into sending their son away, and then came back with her lover, who was also her husband's enemy and a runaway. Together, they invaded England and overpowered her husband. The voice you hear for phone numbers, voicemail, and similar services is not created by a computer. It's actually the recorded voice of a real person named Joan Kenley. In 1993, Vanna White, known for her role on Wheel of Fortune, filed a lawsuit against Samsung Electronics. The reason was a comical advertisement Samsung made, showing a robot turning letters on a game show, which she claimed infringed on her personal rights. The court eventually sided with her, and she received $403,000 in damages. The tongue twister, She Sells Seashells by the Seashore, is actually inspired by a real person, Mary Anning. She was also one of the earliest individuals to discover a huge dinosaur fossil. Mary made this remarkable find when she was just 12 years old, all while she was searching for seashells to sell by the seashore. Cinderella isn't the true name of the main character. Rather, it was a mean nickname that she was given. She had to sleep by the ashes, which made her covered in dust and dirt. Vincent van Gogh, after cutting off his ear, painted a portrait of the doctor who treated him and gifted it to him. Surprisingly, the doctor didn't like the painting, and even used it to patch up a chicken coop before eventually giving it away. Now, this very painting is valued at an astounding $50 million. During Ronald Reagan's struggle with Alzheimer's disease, his condition deteriorated to the point where he removed a miniature ceramic White House model from his fish tank. When asked what he believed it was, he responded, I don't know, but it's something to do with me. Pope Francis has abstained from watching television for nearly three decades as he made a promise to the Virgin Mary that he wouldn't watch it anymore. The term sideburns is derived from Ambrose Burnside, a former Union general and U.S. senator who sported distinctive and extravagant whiskers. Julia Stewart started as a waitress at IHOP when she was 16. She worked hard and became the president of Applebee's. Even though she didn't get the CEO job at Applebee's at first, she later became the CEO at IHOP and eventually bought Applebee's. Disney rejected Back to the Future stating that a plot involving a mother falling in love with her son was not suitable for a family film. Huifang Foods, Inc., the company behind Sriracha Sauce, is worth billions of dollars and is one of the most well-known hot sauce brands. Interestingly, they have never run advertisements for their products and have relied on word of mouth for their success. In the early days of wallpaper production, there was a pigment known as Shields Green. If the wallpaper became moldy or damp, it could release poisonous arsenic into the air. It has been speculated that this may have contributed to Napoleon's death since green was his favorite color, and his living quarters were decorated with green wallpaper.